Okay, today we're going to go over how to install a new 120 volt AC outlet. So the materials and parts you'll need for this project. I got some 12-2 Romex uh, wall plate, a GFCI receptacle, and it's GFCI because we're going to be installing this on the wall in a bathroom. And uh, of course the box. And the tools I'll be using today is a circuit detective or a circuit breaker finder. And that's going to help me find what circuit breaker controls the existing outlet that I'm going to borrow power from. Uh, some some wire cutters, wire strippers, screwdriver, non-contact voltage tester, and a box cutter. So in this master bedroom bathroom, behind this door, there's this outlet that's never used. This is the outlet we're going to use to borrow power from. Currently it's live. So we're going to go find out what circuit breaker controls this outlet. Here's our circuit breaker panel. So I'm just going to go up and see if I see anything that says upstairs, master bathroom, master bedroom. So it could be three or five. We use our receiver, turn it on, it's powered up, and I scan the entire panel twice. And you can see the arrow pointing up, so that end of the device needs to be pointing up. And the receiver will flash and blink when it finds the proper breaker. So again, I'm going around a second time. out there yep Woo! so it looks like number three 15 amp breaker is our breaker and sure enough master bedroom bathroom you can see the power is off now I'm gonna double check with my non-contact voltage tester Go ahead and remove the cover plate. I'm working by flashlight right now since the power turned off the overhead lights to the master bedroom. <laughs> now don't assume that all the wires in your box are off even though you turned off that breaker. Sometimes things get wired funky. There may be live wires in the box still. So be careful. Once we gently pull out our existing receptacle, I'm going to use my non-contact voltage tester to test all the wires in this box to see if any of them are still live, and none of them were. Here you can see me using the voltage tester, and everything is dead inside there. Now I'm going to mark on the wall in the bathroom exactly where I want the new receptacle to be. Now I know there's some Romex in this wall providing power to that existing outlet on the other side. And there's also wires going up to some light switches directly above the area that I'm working. So I'm not going to dig into the wall with a long drywall knife. That's why I'm just using this little short box cutter blade. Because I'm less likely to accidentally nick any wires inside the wall. 
And you'll know I put down a piece of cardboard on the floor to protect the register and the floor from all the drywall dust. You can also use an oscillating um, multi-tool to cut into drywall as well. But using a sharp box cutter like this is quick and easy. I sped up the playback speed of this video in the interest of saving time. Okay, I made a mistake and I cut the hole for the box about one inch too far to the left. So I had to cut out a one inch strip of the drywall on the right side so I could move the box over to the right one inch. I'm attaching a wood strip inside the wall, the drywall screws. And that will give me something to screw my drywall patch to. One of the downsides of working by flashlight, trying to film and work at the same time, you make silly mistakes like that. <laughs> Easy fix. Woo! Now we'll simply take that piece of drywall and screw it to that wood strip. Now you have a couple options to finish this little patch. You can do mud and tape. I don't think it's necessary for something this small and clean and simple. I'm just going to fill it in with some spackle that is non-shrink, non-cracking spackle. All right, so you see there's little plastic wings on the box. When you tighten those Phillips head screws, the wings will grab the back of the drywall. Now we'll go ahead and feed our Romex cable into our new box. Just want to cut it to the proper length that I need. And you need to make sure the cutout and the drywall will accommodate those little plastic wings. That's why you'll note the shape of my cutout is sort of a zigzag shape. It's not a perfect rectangle. Pull the Romex through your box, gently push the box in, and then very gently tighten those screws down. Remember, it's a plastic box with plastic tabs or wings. You don't want to snap or break anything. Now that we have our box installed, go ahead and peel back the jacketing on the the Romex. There's our hot neutral and ground. Here's our new GFCI receptacle. I always start by attaching my ground wire first. Strip off the insulation. Attaching my neutral. Remember white to bright, black to bronze. And your hot terminal, if you ever get confused, is always a shorter slot. The neutral terminal is always a taller slot and your ground is a little mouse house shape. If you ever forget, remember the ground should be pointing down. It shouldn't be on top. If you ever see an outlet with the ground on top, they installed the outlet upside down. So just FYI. So there I applied my color changing spackle to the patch. I'll install my cover plate. When that spackle dries, I'll come back and do some touch-up painting on that. There we go. 
on the other side of the wall, we'll go ahead and connect our Romex to our existing outlet. And stripping the, the wires, cutting them to length. And again, I connect all my grounds first. Make sure your connections are nice and tight. I ended up plugging in my work light at the outlet down the hallway outside of the master bedroom. <laughs> I'm just checking my existing connections, make sure nothing's loose. And I'm going to utilize these screw terminals to land my new wires. So again, I connect my neutral. Remember white to bright, you know, that silver colored screw and then black to bronze, the darker colored screw. And make sure you bend your loop in the direction that you're going to tighten the screws. And again, for safety, I wrap electrical tape around all of my terminal connections on my switches and outlets as a best practice. Wow. And we'll just carefully tuck all the wires neatly back into the box. Reattach our cover plate. Turn on the circuit breaker. And using my outlet tester, we can see we have power and it's correctly wired on the existing old outlet. And here on the other side of the wall in the bathroom, you can see it's correctly wired and powered up. And again, once that spackle dries all the way, it will turn white. I'll give it just a very light sanding and then spot paint it. And you shouldn't even really notice that it was patched. Wow. I hope this information helps. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment or question below. And thanks for watching.